Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for Lexio on the Go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These uh, our readings are taken from James 5, 16 through 20, and the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 5 through 13. These are the readings for Monday before Ascension, which is called a Rogation Day. A Rogation Day, traditionally in the church, is when we plead, we ask God for some need. Um, we have to remember that our needs are both physical and spiritual. Many times we're so focused on the physical needs. Uh, Lord, give us a good rain, or Lord, uh, cure us of our diseases. And we should. We should definitely always ask the Lord to cure us um, or to help us with our physical needs. But there is something way more important than physical needs, and that is our spiritual uh, need and ultimately our, our spiritual eternity, like what will happen to us eterna, eternally in a spiritual sense. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that we can think is there's, there's something more important than the temporal. And so we ask for physical things, but more importantly, we ask for spiritual things. Jesus mentions that Eli Elias prayed that it might not rain for three and a half years. So that seems strange at first. Why would a prophet um, pray to God, asking God to um, for a famine, basically, uh, for a drought. And this is, you know, we know this, this is so that in our physical needs, we end up then asking God for things. And so the physical deprivation ends up bringing about a spiritual growth. And this has happened probably in almost all of our lives, where when bad things happen to us physically, when we have material evils take place, they can either lead us towards God or away from God, but many times they lead us toward God. And we realize that this is not everything we have. The temporal is not everything we have. There is something else. Um, it, it seems that in this world nothing can please us. So therefore there must be something else that can please us, something else that we can continue going for. And so why is it that Elias, Eli, Elijah prayed that it might not rain for three and a half years? Um, so that people would put a focus on God, so people would come back to God, would repent and come back to God. And this happens throughout Scripture, that this repentance and this conversion to come back to God is necessary. And so it is in our weakness that we call out. When everything is great, when we have all the food we want and all the money we want and all the security we want, all the pleasure we want, we, we, sometimes it's very easy for us to forget God. And so this is why the prophets, or in God's providence, why there will be a deprivation, a need. And then in our need, then we call out to God. Um, it is important that it's three and a half years. We see this in Scripture, especially in Revelation. We see that this is, of course, three years and six months. It's also 42 months, and it's 1,260 days. These are um, associations with uh, periods of time. So it may not literally be the exact time, but this three and a half is um, half of seven. So seven, of course, would be perfect. So this is half of perfect. This is a, a, an imperfection. But it is a period of time in which there will be a trial. So we look at Diocletian, uh, the persecution. It is my understanding that uh, the Diocletian persecution, when it was at its heaviest, was three years long. Um, we also have the Reign of Terror. I believe that was a whole year um, during the French Revolution. And then we have even the plague of abortion. So many lives um, have been taken, killed, and so many mothers and fathers wounded, and the society in general been wounded by uh, the court case Roe v. Wade, which legalized abortion in our country. So we have, and this of course has been way more than three and a half years. So we have these plagues, these famines, these scourges, these times of deprivation. And what do we do during those times? Well, if you look at what happened during the, the time of Diocletian, during his persecution, how many saints came out of that per persecution, and how many of those saints do we still read about and still want to, um, you know, imitate? And then we have, of course, the wonderful stories that come out of the reign of terror and how people were willing to stand up for their Catholic faith. Um, There's a beautiful story. I don't remember it all, but a beautiful story. I think of about 12 nuns that um, were were some of the last to die at the guillotine. And, and each of them uh, heroically died and were martyrs for Jesus Christ and his church. And then, of course, we have the whole pro-life movement and what that has done in our own country and even across the world to um, respect life, to have a deeper respect for life, to have a deeper respect for children and family and, and 
and just perseverance in that fight, fighting for what's right no matter what is at stake and, and persevering in that. And so all of these deprivations, whatever they may be, um, in those needs, God allows those needs. Does God want all those things? He, he doesn't want those things, but He allows them, and He allows them so that we will come to Him. And this is exactly why the prophet uh, Elias um, prayed for a famine, so there would be a conversion. Um, then we read in uh, James that he talks about the, this, this conversion, and that it is actually a good work to convert a sinner, that this is one of the greatest things we can do. Um, so he says, He that causes a sinner to be converted from his error, from the error of his way, shall save his soul from death, and shall cover a multitude of, de uh, multitude of sins. And so you're going to, if, if we work for the conversion of sinners, this is a spiritual work of mercy, that if we love someone truly, then we will um, lovingly speak the truth to them and inspire them and help them come back to Christ. Um, and this could be very well in a time of hardship for them, that in their hardship, we are there for them. We are patient with them. We are listening to them. We are helping them. We are showing them charity. And, and we do all that because we love them. But the ultimate thing we care about is not just their physical needs, but we know there's something greater than the temporal need, something greater than the physical need, and that is their spiritual need, their conversion. And so to help convert a sinner and those that have helped us convert, they will save their soul from death, and the person possibly from death, and cover a multitude of sins. What does it mean to cover a multitude of sins? Well, this isn't talking about mortal sins because there's no way you can do anything. Even converting a hardened sinner isn't going to cover up your mortal sin. Only confession can do that. But this is a covering up of our venial sins, our imperfections. And we all have plenty of venial sins. And so what is one way to cover up those venial sins? What is one way to get rid of those venial sins? It is to do the works of mercy, um, particularly um, admonishing the sinner and converting the sinner and helping them return back to God. This also humbles us because we have to also be living for God. We can't be hypocrites. We have to really um, correct the people and know that we are, we are striving and to live the holy life that we need to. Um, and ultimately, what is this happens in our trials? If you look at the notes, the trials... In the trial, hopefully, God willing, give us the grace in every trial, no matter how hard. We can ask this prayer now um, while we're not in the trial. But while we are not in the trial, let us ask for the grace that when we get in a trial, we will have the desire to ask, seek, and knock. This is ultimately what we should be doing. And this is what Jesus gives us this pattern, that we ask, we seek, and we knock. Now that word right there spells ask. Ask, seek, knock. You have the A, the S, and the K, so you can remember it. That when I am in a trial, when something hard is going on, just simply ask God for help. Seek Him and seek His will. Where is His will in the situation? And then knock. Be willing to open the door to Him and do what is ever necessary. And, and ultimately to remember that there is um, the spiritual is way better way more important than the temporal. Our temporal needs are real, but so are our spiritual. Thank you for joining me for this Lexio on the Go. Please take the time to please take the time to visit linktoliturgy.com where you'll find fast, free, and faithful resources on the gospel. And check out our online school, linktoliturgy.teachable.com. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.